five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett. This is the show that goes to midnight Eastern Daylight Time, and I am your humble and obedient host. I'm Alex Bennett. How are you? Good to see you. How are you? Let me just turn my mic up here. Let me turn my earphones up a little bit so I can hear it better. Uh, I don't have any guests tonight, uh, and uh, uh, I, I have nothing to talk about either, but I guess I will find something to talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, I was not on last night for a couple of reasons, but the, one of the main reasons was is that I was so disquieted by the night before that I just decided to not do it last night, rather than face more... Uh, depression over the fact that somehow lately, uh, for some reason, uh, our uh, our amount of callers that we get on the citizen panel has been woefully weak. Okay, uh, yeah, sometimes we uh, we uh, in the in the uh, in the show uh, it'll be like really low, and then towards the end, a bunch of people will call. Uh, but it, it, it's just made for some very dull programs, and I just didn't want to face that again last night. I had other reasons why I wasn't on last night, which would be the same reason why I maybe wasn't going to be on tonight. In fact, both of those reasons would be the same, but we'll, I decided to come on and jump in the pool again and see if anybody calls this goddamn program. Uh, you know, it, when I when I it came up with the citizen panel, I thought it was a rather unique idea when I first came up with it, we had to beat them off with a with a baseball bat. I mean, sometimes we get 13, 14 people on at the same time, and now I'm lucky if I've got six. Uh, and I guess maybe it's just that people have gotten too used to it, and um, they are uh, they're just not interested in it anymore. And uh, you know, my question is, if that's the case, why am I doing this? You know. I could be spending my leisurely years uh, traveling around the world rather than sticking myself here and, and, and uh, chaining myself to a podcast every night, uh, you know, four nights a week, 52 weeks a year. So anyway, cheers. Mm. Mm. So that had me kind of really down. There was some other stuff, too, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but. Uh, you know, I'm just getting to the point where I say, hey, I, I don't feel like doing a show tonight. And so I don't do a show tonight. And that's it. That's the way it goes. By the way, uh, in case you don't know it, uh, we are on Facebook tonight. Let me just make sure that it's going up on Facebook okay. It should be. Yeah, there, there we are. There we go. There are only two people watching on Facebook. I don't know why I even do this on Facebook anymore. Uh, because most of the people now are so used to going to YouTube to get it that they don't go to Facebook. And um, but if you uh, if you want to see it, and uh, you know, and you um, uh, you know, I didn't do it the last couple of nights on on Facebook because it, it it takes me a little bit to set up and everything, and I just didn't feel like it. If I could push one button and set it all up, then it would be like in there but uh, it's not it's and it's not that difficult but it's also just more work than I want to do okay I've kind of given up on doing the work oh what's this so my my memory is down oh boy oh we got all kinds of things happening here. anyway so anyway last night I was I I was up till um, uh, four uh, three o'clock in the two o'clock in the morning two o'clock yeah a little after two Watching a documentary, as you know, when I was younger, when I was a young whippersnapper snapping whips, I used to go to a place uh, out in the middle of the Mediter uh, Mediterranean or off the coast of Spain in the Mediterranean called Ibiza. Now, uh, uh, a lot of people call it Ibiza. It's not Ibiza. It's Ibiza. Okay. It's Castilian, the T-H. Ibiza. And... Um, 
I used to go to Ibiza. Now, everybody goes, oh, well, you're going to that place, huh? you know, like everybody else. Well, no, back in that day, nobody was going there. Uh, you know, who was going there, uh, there were two, two people, uh, two kinds of people. There were expatriates from the United States who were maybe dodging the draft or getting away from some crime they committed in the United States, and they went to this island, which I kind of thought of as kind of like a pirate's island in a way, because the people there were all, all had some kind of backstory, all right? Uh, and uh, I had some friends who, who went over there and were living there for a while. Uh, and uh, they said, why don't you come, come see us? And uh, I knew a woman here in New York. Her name was Ginger J. Walker. I, I know, Ginger J. Walker. Um, but that was her name. And uh, I met her, I guess I met her at Max's Kansas City. And I got to know her. And I don't know if we were even fuck buddies. I don't think we were, we were having a relationship that way. But in any event, she was very big on Ibiza because she had just come from living there. Um, because she had been the, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, the nanny for Clifford Irving. Now, do you know who Clifford Irving was? Does anybody remember the name Clifford Irving? It might strike a bell. Let me see here. Is that a bell? I can't even get anything. Okay, well, that, might, that might strike a bell, okay? Uh, Clifford Irving uh, wrote a book uh, which essentially was the Howard Hughes biography as told to him by Howard Hughes. And uh, he, uh, he got a... Uh, um, uh, let me see here. Uh, he got a, a a book deal with, I'm trying to remember who. It was with whoever Time Life owned. Uh, oh, what was the name of that publishing company? Well, anyway, he got a deal uh, for this book, which he, he had written as told to him by Howard Hughes. And uh, about a day before the book is about to come out, Howard Hughes does something very unusual. He decides that he is going to hold a version of a press conference. He was not going to be seen, but he was going to be heard by telephone, by this big, you know, little telephone box that everybody could hear, sit around and hear the speaker. And he said that he wanted to, he, he never was getting very public in those days. Nobody had seen him for years. And he said he normally doesn't go public, but he had to come public on this because he never, ever gave interviews to Clifford Irving, and the book is a hoax. Well, uh, the company, and I'm trying, McGraw-Hill, that's who it was, McGraw-Hill, because I had a big joke about who does McGraw, uh, the answer, there was, a, there was a bank here called Irving Trust, and I said, uh, the answer is Irving Trust, and the question is, uh, who doesn't McGraw-Hill um, uh, go along with or something like that. Irving Trust. What doesn't McGraw Hill do? Irving Trust or Trust Irving or whatever. Anyway, forget it. I can't even remember the joke. I can't remember anything these days. I don't know what I'm doing a fucking podcast, okay? Anyway, so um, uh, she was the nanny for Clifford Irving. He wrote this book, and, and uh, you said about a couple of days before it came out, that he had nothing to do with it, and it's a phony. Now, Clifford had taken, I think it was, was it a million, two million dollar advance on this book because everybody wanted a book by, by Howard Hughes, and this is ostensibly was a book by Howard Hughes as told to Clifford Irving. Well, Clifford Irving then got arrested, and I don't know, I think he spent some time in jail for this thing. Because he took that money, and he took it under false pretenses, and uh, it was not for real. But it was really good. You know, I mean, some people said, well, maybe we don't have Howard Hughes to uh, talk to. But if we were to find out something about what Howard Hughes might be thinking, uh, this book did a nice job of, 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 uh, uh, of channeling him, okay? But anyway, he wrote this book, and he wrote it, in uh, this island called Ibiza. And on Ibiza, 
let me explain this. On Ibiza was kind of, as I say at this time, was an island of uh, what I call pirates and thieves. I, I, you know, I'll tell you more about the people I met while when, when I went there, but um, it was a it was a strange little island, and one of the people that lived on this island was a um, major criminal. His name was Elmir Dahori, and I have a picture of him, and I, I was trying to figure out a way I could show you my pictures, and I don't have a slideshow thing that I could do with it. Maybe some night I'll, I'll run it, and I'll show you some pictures. But I actually have a photograph of Elmir Dahori in, in Ibiza. Um, Elmir Dahori, in case you don't know that name, and you should, was the world-famed art forger. Um, he did incredible forgeries, of paintings. Now, let me explain to you the kind of forgeries he did. He didn't like say, oh, well, I'm doing um, the Mona Lisa, here's my forgery, okay? What he did is he would say, this is a Rembrandt, or this is a Matisse, or this is a whatever, but it's an undiscovered Matisse, it's an undiscovered Michelangelo, or whatever. And he would do a picture in that person's style that was never known to exist, but now it has been found, okay? And his forgeries were sitting in some of the most famous art galleries in Europe. And to this day, probably some of them are still there because they don't know they're phonies. But anyway, he was living on this island, and he was living in grand style, and he'd made a lot of money off his art forgeries. And... Um, Clifford Irving knew Elmir de Hori, and he wanted to do something to impress Elmir de Hori. So what he did was, since Elmir de Hori had his own set of hoaxes, uh, 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 Clifford decided that he was going to do his own hoax and impress Elmir. So he sat there on Ibiza and wrote this autobiography of Howard Hughes. Well, um, as I say, things didn't go as planned. He came back to the United States. He sold the book for a million dollars to McGraw-Hill. Uh, Howard Hughes then exposed him. They took the money back. He wound up in jail, and I think he spent some prison time. And I don't know if Elmir was impressed, because if you're going to do a forgery of some sort, you the object is not to get found out. The object is for it to sit there in a museum or in a, being published as a book. Here was, I think, what Clifford Irving was thinking. You know, when I went to Ibiza, I noticed that you were so remote from, at that time, you were so remote from the rest of the world. You know, it was before cell phones, before Skype, before anything like that. If you got a, if you, to find out what was happening in the world, you went and bought a newspaper. But they came the next day. So whatever had happened had already happened, okay? So you didn't have to worry about it. So nobody bought newspapers. Nobody cared about a television. So you live in this bubble, in this vacuum, and you start to think, well, I can write a book on Howard Hughes, and he hasn't come out of the of woodwork for, like, years. So if I write it and it's a forgery, he's not going to come forward and claim that it's phony because he doesn't make public appearances. He doesn't like to go out in public. So, you know, so he then wrote this book thinking, you know, you get these ideas. Hey, this will not happen and that will not happen. And you live in this bubble so you don't know what the real possibilities are. All you got to do is say, well, what if Howard Hughes does come forward and say he didn't write it? All he has to do is say that and I'm dead. But no, he, I don't think he thought that. I thought sitting there on Ibiza, he was, you know, the sun kind of makes you loopy and crazy, and the sun on Ibiza is very nice, you know. And um, so he wrote this book, and um, uh, the, the, it was in that context. This was before Clifford, I think, got found out. or No, he, he hadn't, hadn't found out yet, I don't think. Or maybe she was now back in the United States because there wasn't a job anymore. Well, I think it was that they came back. That was it. And um, so uh, she told me, you got to go to this place, Ibiza. And I said, I had these friends there, and they keep saying I should go to Ibiza. And she said, you'll love it, right? And I'll hook you up with people I know and so on and so forth over there. So I said, okay, 
I'm going on vacation. So I tell the station, I'm taking a couple of weeks off, and I go to Paris, and then it's on to Ibiza. And in those days, when you went to Ibiza, uh, it was not the shortest of all trips. First, you, I, I went to Paris, and I took a plane from Paris later on to Barcelona. And then from Barcelona, I went to Ibiza. Now, the plane to Ibiza was a prop job in those days. And the airport, which was built by Franco, it's the Ibiza International Airport, right? What do you think about that? Eh, a lot of whatever, you know, jetways and things like that that you got there and a lot of counters. and everything. No. I arrived at about 10 o'clock at night, and it was this shack. With It did have one of those, those things for your luggage, you know, the, 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 the traveling uh, belt, okay? But that was about it. Otherwise, it was just a shack. And, I mean, the plane landed... And there were no other planes around, you know. It was just nobody was going to Ibiza that much. I think there were two flights a day going in there. Uh, now there are any number of flights going there, an incredible amount of flights. Something like 100,000 flights per year go in and out of Ibiza, maybe more. Anyway, so I get there at about 10 o'clock in the morning. My friends pick me up. And they go, let's go down to Ibiza to the, to the, to the town. There, there, there's, there's the old town, which is where we went, were going, and uh, there was actually the old town is up on the hill, and the new town is down off the hill, but it's pretty old on its own. And um, living on this island were expatriates, were people who were running away from the law, drug dealers, uh, uh, not not hard drugs, uh, hash dealers, uh, people who were dealing in hash out of Morocco, uh, and it, it, it just a lot of illegal shit going on, you know, and a lot of people who were running away from the draft, and uh, it was, I call it kind of a pirate's island, and I get there at about 10 o'clock at night, and we're, we're walking up the steps in the, old, in the new old town, that's what they used to call it, the new, the, the new old town, and um, I, I see a dog uh, there, and he's chewing on something, and it's a cat. Okay, he's chewing on a cat. I'm see, the first thing I'm seeing in Ibiza is a dog eating a cat. And I said to myself, "This is gonna be great." You know, this is just it's it's gonna be the adventure of a lifetime. You know, and I wanted to feel that I was kind of dropped down in the middle of Casablanca. Does that sound real to you? Okay. Anyway, so I, I felt like I was set down in the middle of Casablanca. And uh, 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 we went over to this place called La Finca, La Finca, which is a bar. And uh, we had uh, some yerbas, which is the drink of the island. You can only get it on the island. It's uh, a liqueur made out of, uh, it tastes like licorice, kind of. And it's made from... Uh, from uh, bushes that are on the island, okay? And for the next couple of weeks, um, I was high on uh, drugs. There was a thing in Spain called Dormadinas. They, there were 10 of them in a box, and uh, they were little blue pills, and there were 10 of them to the box, and they were, I think, if I remember correctly, 50 cents a box, all right? And each uh, those Dormadinas, you know what they were? They were half a dose of, of uh, quaaludes. Remember quaaludes? Great drug back in the day. Great to fuck on and whatever. Anyway, so we're high on doing Dor Here, you want a Dormadina? Yeah, okay, hmm, right? And uh, in, in fact, I, when, I was in, um, when I was in Madrid, waiting, uh, uh, spending the night before getting my plane to go to Ibiza. Oh, I went to a Madrid. I didn't go to Barcelona. I took the train, plane to Madrid and then to, to Ibiza. And uh, I bought uh, about five packages of these Dormadinas, ostensibly to take back with me, but I never did because I was too paranoid. But anyway, so uh, that was my trip to Ibiza. That was the Ibiza I knew. And my friends lived out in the country, and I stayed with the, I stayed with one of them in the city, and then I went out to the country for a couple of days, and out there, 
there was no electricity, and they had to, you know, you had to get ready for nighttime. You had to trim all the wicks on the lamps and everything, and then light them up at night. And, but it was, it was just wonderful. And then we went out to this place called uh, Vedra, uh, which uh, is a very magical spot, which it's rumored that when Hercules was, did you ever hear the story about Hercules traveling past this island? And the sirens called out to him, and they had to lash him to the to the uh, to the to the mast, so he the people uh, none of the people on the boat would dr- jump ship to go to the, the the sirens on the island because they they would die. Okay, that was the island that Hercules was supposed to have seen the sirens on, and there's a lot of history about it, and it's a beautiful place. And we went there, and that, that, that was magical. We went up to this Moorish sentry tower and hung out for the day. I wish I, wish I had a way to show you the photographs, because they're really good. They're really good, and they're really uh, amazing photographs. Uh, and it was just a wonder. It was the most wonderful vacation I ever had. And I went back on several occasions to Ibiza, and each time it did not let me down. The first time I went, some famous people lived on the island. Terry Thomas lived there. The Bee Gees were raised on the island. Uh, it's, um, uh, you know, it, a lot of other people were supposedly uh, either lived on the island or born on the island. Raquel, we- uh, not Raquel Welch, uh, 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 Ursula Andrus uh, lived on the island. Because I, I know because the laundry, the laundromat on the island, because you had to take your laundry to town. There was no such thing as a washing machine. I mean, maybe you could go to a stream and, you know, hit your clothing on the, on the rocks. But the laundromat had a picture of Ursula Andrus bringing her, her what do you call it, her uh, laundry across the street in a thing called an Ibiza bag, which was very unique to the island. These were bags that people bought, fit around your shoulders. I had one I owned for years, and then every time I went back, I bought another one to take it back to the United States so I would have one. Um, But I went back there, I think, about three times. I I think the first time, then another time, and then finally the last time was in 1997 with uh, Kathleen, who calls this program. And I mean, she'll agree with me. It was just a wonderful place. And it was still wonderful then. But what this documentary showed is it showed the history of Ibiza, and then it, it showed what happened when the Beatniks first went there in the 50s, and then said the hippies went there in the uh, 60s and 70s, and that was when I was there. And it mentions Elmir to Hori, and it, it mentions that what we did on the island and uh, then it goes to the future and more and more commerce and more and more hotels. And what I'm looking at is making me want to get sick and vomit and go apoplectic. How could you do that to what was once a paradise? Okay. And uh, supposedly Ibiza now is one of the dirtiest islands uh, in the Mediterranean, one of the dirtiest islands in the world. There's so, so much tourism there. There's garbage and junk and stuff in the water and, and all of that. And uh, the ending of it pretty much says this place is a real rat trap now. Uh, and hopefully someday everybody will give up on it and leave and it will reclaim itself and it will become the wonderful island that it, it once was. But I really love the documentary. If you can find it, it's called Ibiza, a silent film, I think it's called, something like that. Uh, Ibiza, a silent film. And they ran it on the BBC. And it was done by the the guy who did uh, the great rock and roll swindle, the picture about the uh, sex pistols. Uh, And it's just, just a... It was a great work. I thought I would sit there and be pissed by it. Oh, they didn't do this, and they didn't say that, and they're romancing the island and all the dancing. And And what it turned out to be at the end was a put-down of Ibiza and saying it has just been so overrun by tourism, and it has so been glutted by money that has been made there. I mean, I'm sure if I went there, I would not recognize the island. The only thing I would recognize is the old town and the new town, and then the rest of it is just probably giant, you know, skyscrapers. 
Uh, and uh, so that's my that's my story to tell. So anyway, yeah, look, it's time to go to the phones. Watch, nobody will call tonight. Um, I hope so because then I can then I can call it quits early. Come on, I gotta get my little thing up here so that I can not my thing up here, you know. Um, but I I I you know I've been thinking about maybe doing my own little documentary about some of the footage I have from Ibiza and the photographs and so on and uh, talk about it. Anyway, I'm turning on the, uh, the Skype line, so if anybody wants to call, you can do that. If you don't want to call, well, fuck it. You know, I don't care. I have a new policy now. If we don't get enough of a citizen panel, uh, I call it quits at, uh, at uh, 11 o'clock, you know, because why do I need this? So I can turn out some kind of substandard show... Well, here comes uh, here comes our worst nightmare, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, let's see here. Here comes Phil. Let me put him in here. There's Scuba Diver. Uh, How you doing? You're, you're back from uh, where? From uh, Nashville. From Nash? Was it Nashville? I thought you were going to like Florida or something like that. No, no, no I had to go to Nashville. Why did I think that? Uh, I think Jeff was going to Florida. Huh? Oh Jeff, Jeff, Jeff uh, was going, Stein. Oh, Jeff Stein was going to Florida. Uh, yeah, yeah, but he's going to Florida next week, not this week. So yeah. I just thought you'd said uh, Florida, you know. Oh. Let me see here. Mr. Dan, there we go. Dan, Hello. Dan is with us tonight. Uh, haven't seen you in a while, Dan, but good to have well, you here. Well, I, I got a new, uh, I got my setup fixed better. What do you mean your it's, setup fix better? Well, I'm not yeah. I'm not doing it on my phone anymore. I got a decent computer now. Yeah, it looks good. Looks handle. looks oh. good. Yeah, looks good. Uh, you might position yourself a little yeah, better. Yeah, well, that. that's the thing. I I've trouble uh, webcam placement has not been there like right go. now it's oh. on top of a speaker and that's very it might nice. fall off. That's, um, that's very nice. It's it okay. It's, it's <laughs> a little crooked possibly. Yeah, it's just I like everybody to look their best, you know. Uh, let me no, see I have here. to remember to look into the camera. To... Here comes Jeff Stein, ladies and gentlemen. We will uh, uh, double-click on Jeff. Okay, Jeff uh, was in the same spot he was in two nights ago when we were on last. Uh, let me see here. Let me do that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I got to do this. Here here we go. Let me see here. Charlie Wallace is, is calling now. Uh, let me see here. Charlie, let me get Charlie. Uh, this Charles Wallace. There we go. He's so formal on his uh, on his Skype. See, with with all of these suspects, you're not going to get to cut the show early. No, I guess yeah. I. Well, we we only have four right now. Don't count your, you know, don't count yeah, your no. count your chickens. Yeah, if you build it, they will come. We. People always call in when he threatens to quit, so that... Uh... Yeah. No, well, I'm not threatening to quit. It's just that, I you know, know, there are alternatives I've been, <clears throat> I've been mulling over, you know. Well, yeah, that world traveling thing, you could do that. That sounds cool. Yeah. You know, it'd be yeah. nice if I, could, if I could have a computer strong enough to be able to do the citizen panel and take it with me and then go around the world and just do the show every night from wherever I happen to be. But oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, but you, I'm not guaranteed the bandwidth. Okay. Can, yeah. Can you just do it on Skype and then post it later as a uh, posted show? So even though it isn't necessarily live posting, uh, it's posted mm -hmm. within a day or two. That's the not, way that's not a bad idea, but yeah. it's still a question of whether, you know, I, I guess I guess if I do the audio only, it doesn't take it up as much bandwidth as the <laughs> video does, you know. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. You know. <laughs> uh, but uh, so how was your how was your trip, Phil? Uh, trip was uh, very productive. I got to see my mom and my sister on Wednesday night. We had dinner. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, then, uh, you know, a couple hours. That's that's enough. <laughs> you know, there's a reason I live 3000 miles away. Well, I mean, you but... never you never see them, Phil. I would think you would want to see them every night while you were there. Uh, I I couldn't, you know. Uh, I got in. I had a six a.m. flight on Tuesday. Uh, I got in and walked into the meeting at three ten in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
Tennessee time. I don't know what time zone that's in. It might only be a two-hour uh, difference. It's, with, it's uh, 1956. It's Eastern there. time. Yeah. It's 1956. Yeah. Tennessee is like 1956, yeah. 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 So uh, actually, it was it was very nice, and the people were nice, and, uh, you know, it, it, it reminded me of most southern uh, – uh, you know, like North Carolina kind of places. Look who we got here. Hey, Dr. Oh, Rob. Smokes. Son of a bitch. Hey, Haven't hey seen there. him in a while. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me... There we go. Uh, Rob Alfano 2. I think you've changed your uh, your Skype or something like that, Rob. No, it's the same no, Skype. It's the same Skype. Have you always been Rob Alfano 2? I guess. I don't I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. I, I just... I haven't... The Skype... Uh, rebooted. I mean, it, it's updated itself. I couldn't figure out how to call. Hey, uh, <laughs> who's Ralph Alfano one? Yeah, well, that I remember. There was a problem, and I couldn't remember the password. And I, I, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to create a new one. That was a yeah. long time ago. Yeah. But here comes so Ke here comes. You Kevin. were asking about the trip. Uh, I get on the plane, mm -hmm. and there's the middle seat is open, and I figured, okay, okay it's going to be a pretty good ride. Mm -hmm. This guy gets on at the last minute with his skateboard, his backpack, <laughs> with four smelly sets of sneakers hanging off the backpack, mm -hmm. and the guy sits in the middle seat. Oh, wait a minute. What, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Kevin, you look like Kilroy was here. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Yeah. It's the camera okay, down. Go right. ahead. Anyway, t continue telling your story. I didn't want to All interrupt right. your wonderful this, this story. guy smelled so bad. How bad did uh, I, he smell? Uh, it was so bad that I couldn't. When I got to the hotel, I took my clothes off and I didn't wear them for the rest of the trip. Only others. And uh, when I got back home, mm -hmm. I sent the dry cleaning stuff to the dry cleaner and the uh, washing stuff. I had Faye wash right away because it was it was so bad that the stewardess yeah. walked up to me and said, "Would you, uh, you know, would you like to? There's some seats open towards the back." I said, you got an aisle seat? She says, yes. I said, I'm there. <laughs> so th this you guy. You were naked on the plane? Yeah. This guy was awful. He, he stunk so bad that my clothes in just 15 minutes absorbed some of the odor. And then the stewardess said to me, you know, normally he looked normal, uh, you know, but she as she walked past him, she realized how bad he smelled. She said, we had a couple that we had to pull off the plane. They smelled so bad that we made them take a shower before they could board another plane. <laughs> well, that's, <nasty>. wow. <laughs> that's that's how bad this guy was. And uh, well, all you uh, need is one one really bad smelling person to stink up a whole plane. Yeah. 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 Remember the old days when you used to wear a tie to get on the plane? Mm -hmm. Oh, people used to dress up to go on the plane. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. now it's they get in the, they get on the plane in their underwear and their PJs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it don't matter. Yeah, but you know something? I think some of that has to do with the attitude of the airlines too. Absolutely. That's true. That's you true. Know, I mean, they're, they're, they're stuffing you in there like sardines. You know, there's it a, is. There was, Airfare is also very inexpensive now, and families are traveling. You know, coming back, there was a screen. She wasn't screaming the little kid, but, you know, she was playing games on her thing, and she wasn't using earphones. And uh, I, I just, I lived with it, and I smiled, and the, the mother was nice to me. <laughs> you know, she, yeah. They're air buses is what they are. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. But, I mean, if they were just nicer, I think we would be a little more, say, nicer ourselves about it, you know? You know, it depends. Sure. I, th I thought everybody that was working, uh, you know, on the plane and the airlines, uh, I fly American all the time because that's where I get my miles and uh, I have the um, a, a credit card that gets me into the lounge. And uh, everybody's nice. You know, I, I didn't encounter any anything uh, awful except the smelly guy. Except the smelly guy. That, yeah. that was the problem. What did he smell like? It only takes uh, one. It, it was so accurate. That you, you you couldn't you know it's like you're, you're covering your mouth and you're saying to myself oh god you know yeah, can I, I I didn't want to reach up to turn on the air to I mean I was, was a, well was it more of like a body odor smell or like yes it, it, pants smell or it was body odor okay yeah it was definitely body odor 
And uh, hey, that I, I flew coach because uh, the uh, the group I belong to they paid for my ticket out and they paid for the hotel and and everything else. It was uh, completely subsidized by the company that I have yeah, yeah. an affiliation with. And uh, so I I tried. I, I didn't think about it because they had their travel agency book the thing and I didn't look at the seat selection until the last minute. Mm -hmm. And so I tried, the only thing I could do was get up into main cabin on a couple of flights where you get six inches of extra room. But the flight with the smelly guy, that was coach couldn't get away from him. Yeah. Couldn't get away from him at all. Yeah. And, and, uh, well I did 15 minutes later, they, uh, Stu rescued me. But, you know, even to try to upgrade with some miles to first class, couldn't do it. There was nothing. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, well, you know. So you had a nice, stinky ride. That's, that's, that's uh, only, good. yeah, the first 15 minutes. It was, it was, it, it was awful. It was not fun. No. Yeah, well. It's like the Seinfeld episode, right? With the yeah. smell in the car. Not, which one's that? <laughs> oh, the Seinfeld yeah. episode where it, where uh, they couldn't, no matter what Jerry did, he couldn't get the smell out of the car. He had to sell right. the car. Oh, was that the Saab convertible? Did, did he sell I, it at I the don't... end, or did he did he did he just leave it by the side of the road? That's somebody, right. And he somebody, left it to be stolen. <laughs> and then somebody went and tried to steal it, and they smelled it, and they couldn't. What, what is in here? And they get out of there. Just That's how bad this guy was. Really? I, I hope he's a listener. <laughs> Could you get it out of your hair? Elaine couldn't get the smell out of her hair. Remember, she tried everything to get the smell out of her. <laughs> what hair? <laughs> True, <you're laughs> wow. Wow. Just buff it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, so you, you had a good trip, I guess. Yeah. I, you know, it was quick. Tuesday in, Thursday out. <clears throat> and, uh, but, uh, and the hotel, this Hermitage, which is uh, sort of modeled after um, which, which president, it was uh, and, Andrew Jackson, I think, I, I think was from Tennessee. And yes, it, I visited uh, his plantation there when it, I was there. Is it called the yeah. Hermitage? Yeah. yeah, that's called the Hermitage. But this is the Hermitage Hotel, and it's 100 years old. And uh, I, because I was the last one to get in, they didn't have any rooms available, so they upgraded me to a junior suite. And this this was really nice. <laughs> you know, it, it was very it, nice. It was based on, I had a, a fruit platter yeah, yeah. and uh, all sorts of all sorts of stuff. You had a fruit yeah. platter. Yeah, fruit and cheese. Is that and what it, it was really is, good is that, stuff. Is that what it takes to keep you happy? Is a fruit platter? <laughs> well, it's part of it. You know, uh, you know, in in the closet they had extra pillows. They had a cervical pillow. They had a buckwheat pillow. And cervical. Yeah, you know, the kind that has the memory foam and it fits to your back of your neck. What the hell is a buckwheat pillow? You can eat uh, it? Uh, the oh, I have those on TV. They had the, <laughs> the one of those uh, as seen on TV things. Yeah, yeah, yeah a buckwheat night. pillow uh, is a. It's, uh, it's, it's from a, the kids. It's and, a little uh, black kid. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Does it, do, it, do it talk to you? Right? Do it talk to you like this? <laughs> no, no. It, but it, I didn't use the buckwheat <laughs> pillow, but I, I normally use a cervical pillow at home, and it was, it, I, geez, I Did was so happy. You should have tried there. the alfalfa pillow. Yeah, then, then your hair stands up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I love that show. You could actually Didn't have. Didn't alfalfa yeah. meet a, 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 an early demise? Because he got shot in a bar uh. by a gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A gun like took gun. alfalfa from us. I think he yeah. I think he was mouthing off to somebody and the guy just pulled out a gun and shot him. You know? Well, that's one way to end the argument. Yeah, that's one way to end the argument, absolutely. Uh but that's what happened to alfalfa. Um and I, I is is Spanky still alive? I don't know. But I, I, I think I there's think a Spanky so. story also. He might have had a heart attack or something. Well, Spanky was, uh, he, I, he lived to be, he was living to be pretty old. Let me look him up here. Let me. You know the here. one that's still, oh no, it's not from our gang. It's the Bowery Street Boys. One of them is still alive. And I think Satch? he, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's no, what it is. Satch yeah, is gotta be pretty old, no, yeah. Satch is, no, Satch, no, Satch was, what's his name? And he's dead, I think. Um, one of, you know, maybe 20 years ago, I heard that, uh, that one that I thought was Satch was in some uh, argument at a restaurant in Marina del Rey. Uh, uh, he he was he was the one that was always getting slapped. 
Yeah, Spanky McFarland uh, died in 1993, so we're really all really wrong. Yeah, no shit, we're <laughs> way off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's oh. been and what did Spanky oh. die of? Does it say? Uh, I would imagine autoerotic asphyxiation. <laughs> <laughs> David Carradine. He, he got killed putting on a show. Uh, let me see here. Uh, death. Uh, McFarlane was in his bedroom in Texas getting dressed in, on June 30th, 1993, when he suddenly collapsed. Paramedics tried to revive him for approximately 30 minutes before... At what point do you say, this guy's dead? I mean, come on. 30 minutes? When the cameras leave the room. <laughs> before uh, transporting him to Baylor University Medical Center in Grapevine, Texas. Uh, well, that's where it, I stayed last time I was in Texas. It was pronounced dead within 40 minutes of being admitted at age 64. It was believed McFarland had died of a heart attack or an aneurysm. Okay. Uh, he got spanked. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So there's your, you know, there's your spanky um, mm. story. 64. Yeah, I seem to remember that he did some promotional stuff. I think when I was a little kid, like in the 70s, I think he would still... You'd see him every now and then do little guest spots on variety shows. Now, what's his name is still alive. Um, 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 uh, Which show? I'm, I'm talking about our gang. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Robert so, Blake. Uh, Robert Blake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was Butch. Yeah. Or Butchy, like, I think he yeah. was called. Him. Butch, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he was. Uh, he was. Uh, uh, but he's still alive. And a real life uh, Butch. Yeah, let me see. Oh, there's 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 Tony. I'm trying to get Tony in here. Hey, you got a yeah. full screen now. You yeah, know, with Tony. Go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. There's Tony. Yeah, we're one short of a full house, aren't we? What's a full house? Mm. Ten. Yeah. So you got nine. Yeah. 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 So we need one more for a full house, but we'll never get that tonight. Well, yeah. But I'm happy I, with this. I think the new full house ought to be the nine screen. The new full house at the rate I'm going is going to be two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. What do we have earlier in the week? We had three of us or something. <laughs> yeah, we, we had three of you, and and you weren't the you weren't the really verbose ones. You know, you're well, kind of quiet, Charlie. As is uh, as is Jeff, and who was the other one who? Who who did talk a lot? Tony, so. wasn't it? No, it wasn't Tony. It was somebody else. But. Um, anyway, I forget who. Tony and Vernon called in. Yeah. So what have you been up to, Rob? We haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, let people know oh. how your life is going. Can you hear me now? I'm having a problem with my mic all of a sudden. Now we hear you fine. There's, Are you okay? There's a little There's, hiss on it for some reason. I don't um, know maybe now it's better. Well, now it's, 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 there yeah, it's you better go. now. There you go. <clears throat> So the reason why I'm on tonight is because my – see, Friday nights used to be my night because during the week I just can't stay up anymore. Um, and Friday night is my night, but my wife, now that she works uh, from like 1 in the afternoon until 10 at night, I feel really bad sitting on Gabnet till midnight leaving her. You know, So I spend time with her on Friday night. But she's in Germany. Oh, okay. She okay. went to visit her niece who got mm -hmm. and so she's there for a week. Uh, yeah. So I'm. You're still having some mic problems. You're having some mic problems. It switches. It seems between yeah. your camera and yep. you, and your mic. And I don't understand why. That's a, that's a new thing here. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But oh, well. but anyhow, that's so that's the reason why I haven't been on. I, during the week, man, I, I'm like, by 10, 1030, my job is so stressful. Yeah. I'm exhausted. Do you remember the, the day, though, that no matter how stressful your job was, you could stay up till 1 o'clock in the morning? Do you remember those days? Yeah. That was called cocaine. I don't know why I'm doing this show at night, you know. Hey, Alex. Yes, Tony. I just thought about all my bad jobs. I never had stress. You never That's had good. There's something to be said for that. And I'm proud of that, really. Yeah. There's well, something to I'll, be said for the fact I, that when you're done at the end of the day, you're done. There's no, no so, carryover in tomorrow. Tomorrow's fresh. So, right. Tony? I like that, too. Oh, well, wait a minute. Tony, you, your, you, your jobs didn't do that to you? Well, my mother's starting to waver on my neck. No, I mean, how much stress, stress was there in that? Uh, what is that? What's happening with your, with your mic there? Uh, 
Oh, so Rob, yeah, it, then it goes it away. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it keeps switching. I have it plugged into the USB port and it keeps switching. I hear it in my headphone, then I hear it coming through the computer speaker. Then I so it's like this this headphone is just keeps Why don't you go back to the computer speaker? It I'm on the computer speaker now. Uh -huh. But that means the mic is coming from the computer as well and not yeah. from So unplug. Yeah. So this is okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, got it's got a hiss though. There is a hiss. Well, yeah, but if he un if he unplugs the mic, he'll probably lose the hiss. That there could is be. No mic. Uh, it's completely unplugged now. Oh, oh. Well, well, so much for that theory. So much for your theory, Phil. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, but um, uh, you know, I mean, there was a time when uh, I mean, like uh, uh, maybe uh, the reason I get so tired is I do the show at uh, ten o'clock at night. You know, yeah. maybe I should do this show at, uh, you know, earlier in the day or what? You used to. Huh? You used to. I yeah. used to. Yeah. Maybe nine. I don't know. You I, might get some. You used to get different callers in the afternoon. You yeah. Know? But I didn't get any much. I got like maybe two or three and that was it. Yeah. Uh -huh. When we do did, a wacky morning show. Well, do a <laughs> wacky morning show. Yeah, then, yeah. I, then I have to get up in the Sounds early right. morning. I don't know if I'm if I'm go ready. on before uh, uh, Damien and uh, you know let let him follow you. Yeah, but you know what's nice about going on at night? I think Alex, with your show now, you can like talk about the news of the day, like what yeah. goes on. Sometimes when you're on it, when you're on it serious in the morning, a lot of stuff didn't break yet. Maybe I don't want to talk about the news of the day. Maybe it makes me so depressed. No, that, just, that knowing said, about it, face, I mean, I no. Rob has been has t written me about the fact it's that he Trump. just doesn't pay attention to it anymore. No, I know nothing about what's going on. I, I Did you just hear what he said? I know the major things that are going on. You but don't care. I, Phil, I did care. you hear what Schmuck Face said today? I mean, he cares. I, like I, th enough. I think what you're, what you're saying, Rob, is you care, but you care so much. Yes, I, I can't. It, it eats me up, and I can't have that. My, my job is to... Stressful as it is, I don't need the stress of everything exactly. else. I can't, I can't control what's going on in the news, so I turn it off. Well, Rob, maybe, you, maybe Rob, about. maybe Rob, you should have Tony's job, and then you won't have stress. That's right. She's yeah. And and hey. the only stress is tomorrow. I can't make eggs because I ran out of eggs. So we're gonna have waffles. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Don't we, you have a I neighbor you can go knock on their door and say, "Can I borrow some eggs?" I mean, I could, but we're gonna go to the market tomorrow. So she's like, "I says, Ma, she's I want I want an omelet." I says, "Well, we don't have any eggs because I did have one for dinner." I says, "You're having waffles tomorrow." You ate the only egg. Tack your ass in the middle of the night. You know that she's gonna come over and attack you. She's a small. I'm telling you, you saw her. She's short. She's like a little. Tony, midget. you don't have any eggs. <laughs> yeah. well, she's she not really short. It's, it's not and really I that did, she's. You said, Alex, I covered the pot with she, the egg. It she, didn't run. It's not that she's short, Tony. It's that you didn't yeah. stuff her well enough. Okay. Anyway, yeah. you know, keep thinking now, Alex. What you said a while ago. I look at the knives tonight. And I say to myself, if she can live another 10 years, I'm 60. I'm being pretty good here. <laughs> you know, if you leave her at the bottom of the like stairs, Tony, if you yeah. leave her at the bottom of the stairs long enough, she'll start to smell like the guy that was sitting next to me on the plane. <laughs> Hide the knives oh, tonight, Tony. Hide the knives. <laughs> well, I, I respect you for... What do I respect you for? You're getting paid to take care of her. Exactly. Yeah. It's not you like you're doing this out that. of love, out of what love you for your mother. I mean, Alex, if you didn't have a job, Alex, I'm learning how to cook now. You got to see Alex, me. In that. Well, you don't get medical benefits for that, right? Yes, he does. Oh, yeah, do. He gets a wow. medical plan. Yeah, job he has a medical I plan. Medical for that. He yeah. is he is paid by the city of New York to take care of his mother. Tony, how much do you get paid a year to take care of your mother? Well, twenty an hour. So I didn't really figure out my thing, and I get four hours. This, oh no, I'm getting five hours, time and a half. So I get 50 hours a week, 40 straight, and, oh, I'm sorry, I get 40 straight and 10 over. So I get 50 Alex. a week. So, so in other words, and, and, and I don't have to pay for my medical. Wait, wait a minute, I, I, um, my, my underpants are riding up on me. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm going to start working with the Tony, and take care of the old people. Tony's not going to report her dead when it's time. Yeah, right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, 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 I, wait a minute. Hold on a second, bad. and then I'll go to I'll go to I'll go to Kevin. Uh, twenty dollars, uh, forty hours times twenty dollars is what? 
Eight hundred dollars. Eleven hundred a week. And, 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 and eleven hundred with the money. overtime. You make eleven hundred dollars a week. That means. And then Uncle Sam comes in and takes. Well, that means you make about said, fifty, fifty-two, fifty-three <laughs> thousand. And I can sell my comic books every day. I could walk down the block. Fifty-three thousand dollars a year. Oh, she's calling. Now, hold on a second. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't talk to her like that. Hey, Alex. Like, uh, yeah, Alex. Yes, Gary. You should be paying him for our entertainment value, too. I'll tell you, he's become very funny lately. It's awesome. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. I mean, I think it's I think it's not real. It's like a sitcom because it looks like the house from uh, All in the Family or it's something. It's the Tony and Mom show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, uh, he's so nice. He takes care of his mother. Oh, what do you mean he gets fifty two thousand oh, dollars a year for taking care of her? <laughs> plus medical, plus uh, vacation. Food. Yeah. You know what she just told me? Can you lower the heat? It's it's seventy. It's like thirty eight degrees now. We're worried about the heat now. I gotta put sixty eight now. I'm, I'm gonna lie, I'm not even gonna do it. You I'm already nice it. start. Or around, man. That's it's radio gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even lowering I I lie to her now. I'm not lowering the heat. It's gonna be too cold in her room then. I need to keep her good. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, if you tell her you're lowering the heat, then she'll feel that the heat is lower. It'll but she'll fall asleep. Just she'll fall asleep because I, it's in her. You know, she feels like. Oh, Plus, for fifty-two thousand dollars a year, you don't want to. For fifty-two thousand dollars a year, you don't want to have to go down and shovel coal, right? right. <laughs> I wouldn't do it anyway. You gotta be kidding me. I work Put hard. The pillow and... over her nose and mouth. <laughs> no, no, no. You got to keep her alive, as you said, oh. Phil. I mean, he's got to be like, literally, like Norman Bates. And I'm keep her stuffed and looking like she's still around, so he keeps getting the fifty-two <laughs> grand a year. We, we took well, her to the here. doctor, and you know what he said, Mr. Rubin, the family doctor. He says you're doing a really good job, and my mom's like, I know he's doing such a good job, and I'm saying myself, thank God. You got a Jewish doctor? <laughs> yeah, thank God. You think I'm going to go to her? Exactly. In New York, what a, you know, in New York, York Phil, what are the chances of that? <laughs> I don't want a dumb guinea taking care of my mother. No way. <laughs> I just got rid of a Jewish doctor for a non-Jewish doctor. I don't know what's wrong with me. You know, I'm not helping the. Well, that's not it, though. Huh? No. So your PSA went down. Oh, what happened with that, Alex? I don't you don't want to talk about? I don't that? know if I want to talk about. Okay, that's again. Uh, PSA went down. It went down two and a half points. That's good news. No, good. it's not. It's not good news. How can it not be good news? He gave me a test called a 4K test, which yeah. comes up with a 4K score that comes up with the chances that you have aggressive prostate cancer. That doesn't mean it's terrible, you know. It just means it's the aggressive type. Um, and I got a 47%, so that means there's a 47% chance that if they do a biopsy on me, it will come out as uh, uh, me having... Uh, some aggressive cancer in there. Uh, and so I've got to have a biopsy. All right. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, I, had, less than 50. I had it twice. What? You had Look it at twice. the bright side. It's less than 50. It's less than 50. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, he said that if it, it, it is, you know, aggressive, we, they do find it and it is aggressive and whatever, they can all be taken care of uh, at my age with, uh, uh, radio, you know, radi oh, radiology, see. and that they just. Uh, uh, do you want me to send you a book no, on the thing no, that Hajek no, had no, done, no, which I think no, is what I should no, have done? No, I don't want any of that, Phil. I have a doctor, and he's a very good one, and I'm listening. Well, why don't you to ask him about proton I, therapy? I don't want proton therapy, Phil. I, w I want the thing that's the most effective thing that they have right now in their arsenal, if I need it. You mm, know. Yeah. All right. He said, look, he said, you know, even if you let's say if if worse, it came to worse and you had cancer that had spread to other parts of your body with mm -hmm. prostate cancer, we can give you the hormones and it will stop the uh, the spread of the well, cancer in the other parts of your body. So, yeah. Alex, how do you make a hormone? Refuse to pay her. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bada boom. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, you know, um, uh, needless to say, uh, I, you know, I'm not I'm not happy with the prospects, but uh, I looked at the statistics and of those that have um, uh, radiation therapy, uh, 
uh, at the and it, if it's not too advanced, okay, if it's not left the prostate, uh, the the five year <laughs> life expectancy rate is a hundred percent. Oh wow! So, you know, I mean. Uh, prostate cancer is, it's very lethal. A lot of people die of it every year, but it's because right. they don't pay attention to it. But if you're being paid attention to, you know. So, I mean, I said to him, I said, yeah, but this 4K score was bad, but uh, I'm, I, I went down from a, f a 6 7 to a 4 2. You know? I said, that's two and a half points. And he said, yeah, that's good. I said, so he, he said, but, you know, I, he says, I, th I think I'd rather believe the 4K score and go give you the, the, uh, the biopsy. biopsy. I, and he, and he's I, not I, a guy who rushes to biopsy. I thought you said that they didn't see a tumor. He hasn't felt a tumor, hasn't found a tumor, no. Even, even with that uh, other, the scan? Yeah, what, what he, was they it have not, he has not it's, had any evidence. They don't necessarily have to see a tumor. I've had two biopsies and they never saw nothing. Yeah. They just went by the high PSA. I never gotten a 4K, and I'm sitting on an eight. You're sitting on an eight, and you you had you had two of them, and they never found anything with the biopsies, right? Nope, nothing. So why did they keep I going? Had, yeah, I had uh, one in like 2010, and there they they found nothing. And then I had one in uh, 2015 or six, 16. Uh, or uh, I think it could even 17, but uh, they they found a couple of uh, mm -hmm. of the things sh showed cancer cells. Mm -hmm. And what they, was they didn't tell me whether it was yeah. you know advanced or not. And what was your Gleason score? Uh, mm -hmm. At the time they did the biopsy, it was a three three, and then when they actually did the operation and removed the prostate, it was a four three. So that's a seven. Yeah, which. They said it was good that I had the operation and got it out. Well, no, but oh. with a Gleason score of a seven, that's not... That's pretty high. No, it's not pretty high. The, high, the, the lowest you can go is a six. Yeah. Well, I had a six. Yeah, and, uh, and a, se a seven means that you're at risk. Uh, eight, it's, you're starting to get into trouble. By the time you get to nine and ten, you know... It's over. No, it's not over, but you know, it's yeah. it's pretty well, well. You could it could metastasize and go to the bone. Right, but uh, with a seven, it's probably still localized. You know. Yeah, it was. It was localized. Yeah. It, it didn't spread. And I've been getting PSA tests every six months. Well, you to, see, to you, see, you you could have gone I, you could have gone out and gotten a uh, you could have gone out and gotten a uh, done radiation. Did they offer you that option? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want to go to fifty things of radiation. That's not fifty uh, things of radiation. Yeah, they wanted me to go to fifty or fifty-five uh, sessions. Well, There's, usually it's yeah. anywhere from four to eight weeks of five a week. So if well, you know, it's usually about twenty to thirty. Yeah, this sessions. guy said fifty-five. So uh, maybe he was being uh, uh, aggressive. Well, the one where you don't have to go in and still get the radiation is if they put the seeds in there. You know, uh, you had a mine lot was my prostate was too big. It was yes, 130. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've heard that. Uh, and yeah. if it's over 60, you can't get the seeds. Right, right. So. See, when my dad got sick, Alex, I didn't want to worry anybody. Because like, I knew you were talking about it. Mm -hmm. he, had, he had the prostate. I'd have to ask my prostate. brother and sister the prostate, yeah. And it was low like that where he did have the slow, it was non aggressive, I think he said. So they weren't going to do anything. He said that could sit there for like 10, 15 years. Yeah. Then what happened with him is, though, he was losing his appetite, I noticed. And then he was filling up with water. Like he was totally losing his appetite. He couldn't even eat. Mm -hmm. So then you knew something was wrong because he was always like picking on and eating like his three meals a day. So it's like then you knew they couldn't really find it. He had the what's the Alex Trebek cancer again? Was that the? Uh, that's the one that pan, Alex's pan, wife pan has. Pancreatic. Yeah. yeah. And that's that just funny. came in. Bang. That was it. They couldn't find it though. Everything. All the tests were coming. Well, pancreatic negative, cancer then, doesn't show up till it's too late. Yeah. I mean, then the doctor says, "Oh, he's got two weeks to live." I was like, "What?" They couldn't find it. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I and, he, and his kidneys yeah. were failing too. Yeah. That's what we didn't understand. Yeah. So. Well, well, I think hold on a second. If Rob's trying to say something, and okay. Rob, yeah, you, if I have to go, that's how I want to go. I want to find out I got two weeks to live and have to go that quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't need all this bullshit of 
this test and that test and you got this and uh, years and in and out of doctors and what yeah, he never had it by the that. way he, like the uh, uh, rob you should try and go into your audio and see if you can turn off the compression thing i don't know see, that. I, you know what's good I, alex you're really on top skype? of it what you're really on top I of it it's on skype uh, let me see here you go up to those three lines at the top do you see the three lines when you put your yep. yeah okay and then it should bring up your settings oh wait yeah, i, I uh, I'm in, uh, this is a Mac. This is what? A Mac. Uh, is that the three yeah, lines yeah, all the yeah, way to the right? Yeah, yeah. All the way to the, uh, all the, so way to the left. To the far right. right. No, the left, Phil, on the Mac. The left? Yes. <laughs> I'm on a Mac. Yeah, but it's to the left. Oh, there it is. I see. You got to highlight it to where the names come or up. Or you can even, you call. can even go up to, uh, um. Oh, uh, those three lines. I see. You yeah. can go to preferences also. Yeah. Princess. And that will bring it up, and then you go down into, uh, let's see, audio, oh. video, and then you go to, to your mic, and you can set it for automatically adjust microphone settings. I'm, I'm turning mine off, as a matter of fact. Uh, yeah. Mine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you turn it off? It is, but it's been off. It's been off. Oh. Huh. Well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't pipe, you, pipe you down, then. But who knows? Who oh. knows? Here yeah, we give up. It's just Skype. But anyway, so I don't know. I guess I'm going to die of this. So you know, I, I'm sure it's it's going to get me eventually. My very my 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 dick has finally gotten even with me. You know, <laughs> I know the feeling. What? Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, I mean, I who knows? I mean, it may turn out that I don't. You know, I don't. They don't find anything, as you say in your case. Twice you've had like an eight, Kevin, and they didn't find anything. You know? Yep. But that's why they keep going back. They want to find something. Yeah. Right. And I'll find out next month. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, well, let's try Talking it again. Up. Hmm? Talking about cancer, I don't know if Rob's been listening to the show, but he had recommended several years back uh, the Healthy Paws insurance for his cat. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, my dog's got cancer, and she had an, uh, uh, the tumor ruptured. She internally bled, and we rushed her into the emergency room. It was $11,000 for the operation, mm -hmm. and because of what you recommended, they paid me back 8300 Wow. And uh, and we just had another scan and something else done that was a thousand bucks. They said they're sending me a check for that too. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Uh, thanks, Mike. Rob. <laughs> I, I think in this day and age, if you have a pet, that yeah. insurance is a good idea. You know? My cat had a, a prestige, my 14 year old, she went to the doctor and she was losing weight. And he noted, he said her thyroid was uh, messed up and it was swollen. So what they did was they took her and they put her in the in the, in this hospital and they injected her with radioactive material and she had to stay in the hospital for 3 days because her waist was all radioactive and it has to be stored for a year and then after I brought her home I had to store it for a month I couldn't you know we had to isolate the cats and stuff but she's fine that that was like Four thousand bucks, and the insurance took care of most of that as well. But huh. she's fine. They, they zap her with these uh, one injection and no medication, no nothing. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, look, look, poop. one other thing, uh, Phil, about the four K test is what it does yeah. is it predicts the possibility that you have a uh, Gleason of seven or more. You know. Oh, so th and they'll find that out with the biopsy, yeah. I guess. Yeah, and it could be they'll go in there and find a six. You know, I mean uh, that could or, well or be. Or Sometimes they find nothing because now the the way that you're having it done, where they do the uh, uh, the ultrasound and uh, and they take a picture and uh, and and some other things. I don't know if it's an MRI. They've, they've already done but that. They, o they overlay it when they're doing the biopsy now, and they can go exactly where they can see the cancer cells. Well, that, well uh, they, with, he's not with doing, the needle. He, no, he's just doing a, a sonogram, and that doesn't do that. No, okay. Because no, no. uh, my friend Will had a uh, MRI and a sonogram. So the MRI, uh, I guess they shoot you up with some radioactive stuff, and then they were able to identify exactly where 
uh, they needed to go. And Phil, by with using all this the... information you're giving me, you're driving me nuts. <laughs> you know, I don't, right. I, 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 do, I don't need the advice. Okay, <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's it's my life, and I'm going to have to live it like I want to. I trust this doctor, and he will do what's right by me. He said the procedure only takes about ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. and he it's said, helpful? you know, uh, it's uncomfortable. And uh, for about, I don't know, several weeks afterwards, you're peeing and, and you're peeing blood. Yeah, I know. You know, because it I mixes know. with the... Uh, I have yeah. it written down here on the thing they sent me that you will have blood in your urine for up to two weeks. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it's not... It's, that's nice. It's colorful pee, that's all, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, basically after that, you could have gone right back to work, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, you just didn't feel like Just it. don't sit down. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you can sit down. Not for a long period of time after they do that. Not right. for the not for a few hours. Oh, okay. I better not plan on doing a show that night. You know. I wouldn't. <laughs> you know. You can uh, do the show standing up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've yeah. been very quiet there, Patrick. What's that? You've been very nice. You've been very quiet. You were also very nice and sent me a very nice uh, message. I thank you for that. You know. Welcome. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have much to contribute here with the prostate stuff, so that's why I've been quiet. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you want to ask about paralysis, shit in your pants, piss in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, I got advice on all of that, but uh, prostate, no, um, you know, uh, wake up, your dick doesn't work one day. I got okay, you know, all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> just not, not dealing with what you're talking you about. Know, you know what I came up with, though? I was thinking about it the, yesterday, and, and the only thing that gave me a certain pause for, uh, for uh, uh, dealing with this was that I went, you know, the only reason I have this now is because I'm turning 80. You know, this is a malady. This is something that 70% of men who reach 80 will have prostate cancer of some sort, okay? Some of it will be very mild, and they'll get a 4K test back of 7.5%. That's the... Number you should you, you can't go over and not to get a p you know a, a biopsy, but uh, um, and, and I said to myself, the reason why I have this is if I had died a few years ago, I wouldn't have gotten it. So I'm alive, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and if it, it, you know, and if it's if, old age, then that's something, right? I guess, well, yeah. So what I'm hearing from you is you're looking at the positive side of it, and that's good because you usually don't do that, and I like it. Yeah, well, I mean, that was the one thought I had yesterday was that uh, damn my age, the, the reason I'm getting it is because I am this old. That's right. So, and, yeah, you're, yeah, you're doing yeah. fine. And I and, thought it and, was because you wanted to be like everybody else on the panel. Yeah, and, everybody, <laughs> and everything I've read about this, uh, oddly enough, although – uh, a lot of people die every year. It's the number two cause of death in uh, ca cancer deaths in men every year. It is still the most curable of all the cancers if you get it early enough. And you get it early yeah. enough if you see your doctor all the time and he <clears throat> keeps tabs on you and sees what should be done and not done. So um, I'm hoping that we've gotten it in time. I'm sure we have. You know, I don't have any other symptoms. They yeah. have found... He founds, finds no irregularities in my prostate and in feeling it. There are no tumors there. It feels mm. fine. It looks fine. So I'm assuming that if I have it, it's uh, it's microscopic and it's uh, you know it's there, but it's, it's not. But it's yeah, early. You're on it. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're on top of it. Which you is know, good. I'm sure I would have a tumor by now if it had been more advanced. You know. And your appetite is good too, Alex. Wouldn't that be another sign if you if you weren't like you're no, eating, has losing, losing, losing? What about losing weight though? No, losing has weight. You, to do no, it. yes, it does, Phil. If yes, if, 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 if you could lose weight, 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 I would have left the prostate Phil. in and let the cancer spread. <laughs> Phil, Phil, <laughs> if you have prostate cancer that has spread, you lose weight. 
Okay. Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. also I, was, yeah, I was making you, a joke. You I, have, know? I have no trouble peeing. I have, I have none of the symptoms. Oh, yeah. I have none of the symptoms. So that's what I'm saying. You, you should be fine. That right, Alex? What? You, you would have those symptoms. So you he take pills stuff. for the, for I, the peeing and all that. Yeah, I do. But they wouldn't work very well if I had tumors down there. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, yeah. I don't know. So, uh, you know. Right. Yeah. So uh, I I don't think – my doctor said, listen, at the very worst, you're going to have to have some radiation. That's it. You know, mm-hmm. he said that will uh, take care of it. I think he didn't even mention the hormones, you know. So, I uh, mean, uh, if, if, if that's the worst of it, I suppose at my age I can go up to Mount Sinai once a day for my 15-minute visit and get radiated, you know. And that's a good hospital, Alex, Mount Sinai. You're going to a good one. Well, yeah, it's the closest one. You know, oh, I don't. Oh, I don't want to have to travel too far. Can't you just hold your iPhone up to it and get some radiation that way? Uh, that could be. That's <laughs> one way we could. There's do an it. app for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, supposedly I, I read all about this. They have to like they have to they put like a not a tattoo on you, but they put some markers on your body, so yeah. they know exactly where to put the uh, the radiation. Oh, wow. And uh, you go in and they. They know you, and it's all set up for you, and you go in, you lie there, and it just, and then you leave, you know. Come back tomorrow. So Come back you tomorrow. walk in, and when they leave, you say, thank you very much, Mr. Johnson, for visiting us today. Yeah. Well, wait, wait a minute. I'm not Johnson. Oh, geez. We, we just cut your balls off. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just radiated your lungs. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. That happens and, once in a while. You know, so that, you know, it's, it, it's um, you know, I mean, I'm worried about it, but I'm not worried about it. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, it is what it is, and if it, you know, I, the only thing I'm worried about is I'm going to sit around f- getting worried about the results of the uh, biopsy. You know, and again, it comes back: is it going to come back a seven? Is it going to come back an eight, a nine, a ten? Am I going to be dead the next day? You know, um, but you know, it, um, it it he said it could be a, it could be a seven or more. That's what the test, the 4K test, indicated. Can you see Patrick's hand? Yeah. Oh, there. I couldn't see Patrick because I was looking. I have a tendency to look at the Skype page, and then people yeah, put I up their so. hands. Like <laughs> Jeff, have you had your hand up at all tonight? Uh, not now. Oh, did you lay earlier? Anyway, I have a perfect prostate. I don't know why, but. Yeah, but you're only you're only seventy two. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you get, I was I had a perfect prostate at seventy two. I mean, it was enlarged. It was a bit enlarged, but at seventy two, it was uh, I had like a uh, PSA of like a one or something like that, or a one two, something like that. Yes, Patrick. Um, well, I was gonna say it. It's something that I know Kevin had said many months ago, and so did I to you. When you're going through this, what, six months ago or whatever, isn't knowledge better than not knowing? I mean, at least now you know, you know, what the next step is, you know, it, whether it's bad or it's good. There's a plan now that you're aware of that can be put forth. So if you get your test and you do have some, mm-hmm. you know that they're going to take for radiation and you're going to do that right and, and you know the success rate of it versus where you were two days ago yeah. you had no idea about anything and that that and you know and jeff said that the other night too um you know would you want to know if you had this that I, yeah i i'm i'm that way too i want to know what the hell is wrong with me or what you know is potentially wrong so that we can make a plan and so i can see already you look better just having that knowledge even though you don't know everything yet just having that well, little bit of- you say that when i'm sitting around waiting for the test to come back you know well, yeah, uh, that, but that, that's true alex i mean as that comes by then it's a different type of anxiety but right now you know that if it's bad, there's something they can do. If it's mm. not, then you wait another six months or whatever it is till you go for your next, you know, appointment. Yeah. So he he seemed to you know he said uh, 
He said, but there is, you know, there is a 53% chance that it isn't a seven, you know. So, I mean, I have that going for me, too. I mean, it's not, I would like to have better odds than that, but I, you know, I'll take basically 50-50. Uh, what's, what's the difference between the seven and the 47% chance? Uh, a cutoff point is seven and a half for saying you don't need a biopsy. Oh, so with 47, that's well above the seven. Yeah, it's, I think it's the 4K test hedging their bets by saying if you got a 7.5, there's not a chance you got anything. But they right. say anything over, you should have a biopsy. So I had a 47. And he said he had to weigh that against the fact that my PSA had dropped precipitously. That's so, the, yeah, you're 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 borderline, and he's taking the he's taking the conservative. He's going after it to make sure. Well, no, but he's he's also uh, he threw in this test. I didn't ask him to, but he did. Yeah, because he likes this test for some. He reason. wants to make sure. Yeah, yeah, make you feel better. And was uh, it a freebie? Uh, no, no, it <laughs> Hell no. It, it, it's <laughs> going to cost. It it's going to cost, me it's, it's cost Medicare about four hundred no, bucks. Yeah. How much again? I'm sorry. I'm... 400 bucks. Oh, that's not bad. Well, it's it, it's a score they come up with. They take some other factors and they weigh in your age and blah, 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 and they come up with this number. Which and... is exactly what, you know, what what uh, Patrick's saying is it's just going to give you more information. If you were a little terrier, it would have been 4,000 bucks. Well, here's the trouble with it. If, <laughs> yeah, right. if, if, if let's say, I come out with a... The, the, uh, the biopsy, and it shows nothing. You do know in a year that doctor is going to want to do it again. Uh, a, bi you, a biopsy sometimes can show nothing because they just didn't hit the spot. Well, I'll yell and scream when they do. Uh, yeah, well, they got, yeah, I'm sure you will. Uh, you know, they took 14 uh, little snippets mm -hmm. uh, on the last one, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they only found it in two. Um, and then in, in the previous one, they took thirteen or fourteen, and they didn't find any. Yeah, but and, uh, I had. A, they did that too in the first one. They only took like twelve, I think. And this time, the last one they did, they took like sixteen, I think. They like. Because he kept saying, "Oh, I'm going to grab one more. I'm going to grab one." I said, "Jesus Christ, how many more are you going to do? Just knock it off." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know, he took a couple extra because he wanted to make sure. And you feel each one of those when they. Oh, oh yes, you yeah. feel every bit of it. Yeah. Now, you know, they, they, they hit you with a needle that's supposed yeah. to numb the area. And I asked them, uh, I, I think I asked them for a Valium, and they said, we don't do that at Kaiser. Yeah, you know? I know. And I told them, I said, I guess this is the uh, this is the payback for women having babies because. <laughs> yeah. How bad was it? Uh, huh? It's, it's, not just, it's just a little pinch. It's How long does it last for a while? It's uncomfortable. I mean, you know. I it's a, you would describe it not as painful, but uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, it's uncomfortable. Okay, well, I can live with uncomfortable. And it's like a, a pinch, you know, and then, really then they say everything's done, and then pinch, and it's, you know. Yeah. 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 So, uh, anyway. You get through it. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, well, he, I, 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 uh, he, I asked him if he could anesthetize me, and yeah. he said that, he said, yes, we can. We have a guy in once a month who does do that if you want to be put out. He said, but that's kind of. Not, He'd be better off giving you like a local. Well, well he thing. said he said just if you have some Xanax at home, take a Xanax before you come in. Yeah, just good to, idea. You know, yeah. how, about, uh, how about what they give you at the dentist, the uh, the gas? Oh yeah. Well, that I would be really nice, that. but they don't have that. So. Yeah, well, I'd like that. Bring your own. <laughs> bring my own. Yeah, I'll bring like like. Uh, bring in a case of whippets or something. Whippets, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, no, but he, he said, he said, uh, I, you know, he said that would be overkill. He said, we don't need to really do that. You know? Yeah. Because it's not happening to him. Because he's doing it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and if you're going to take a cab or something yeah. home, uh, then, uh, you know, you're not going to drive. Like I drove after afterwards. Yeah. I drove too. Oh, wow. You and know, the, so, the, you know, what's funny is the nurse sits there and says, okay, don't have sex. I said, I'm not even thinking about having sex right now, for Christ's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> You oh, don't have sex. Do, right do, do I even want it? I go, really? What are you doing right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, this is, uh, are y'all listening, folks? Uh, yeah, they're there. People. They're there. They're listening. They're, yeah, they're checking in uh, on us. Watching. What? You got 29 watching. Yeah, we got 29 watching. and we got 28 of them are cringing, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and how many on the Facebook? I've only got I've only got two people. Well, that means you got thirty one total. If, yeah, but I mean, it, it, one of them's me. <laughs> you know. <All> right. <laughs> okay, so you got thirty. And by the way, two and of a, the and a shill. Two of the so, YouTube. So two, let's two change the subject. Wait a minute. Two of the YouTube people are me. So you know. <laughs> All right. I got in the mail today. Yeah. Since when does Amazon send out Oh, I got catalogs. that too. Catalog. I yeah. Freaking catalogs. I, I must like be it. a good customer. Uh, I've never well, seen I, it. I do use them a lot, but uh, I got a freaking catalog from Amazon today. Well, you know yeah, what's kind too. of interesting? Here, nice. here, here's what's interesting. A few years ago, a major company went out of business. And that major company was Sears Roebuck. Mm-hmm. They're now, going, yeah. Years Slowly ago, they out. were known for the Sears catalog. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did you like the Brazier section? Well, well, as, well, as a well, kid? Well, wait a minute. Hold, a on kid, yeah. Hold on a second. JC Penny, too. And that, if you catalog. think about that, that was the precursor to Amazon. Yeah. Uh, you know, what about and, Sharper Image? Uh, let me finish. Sharp, and so yeah. when, when, when uh, um, Amazon came along and started eating up a lot of business, Sears didn't didn't see this and say, well, let's do the same thing. We have the infrastructure already for yeah. that. You know, we've been sending out catalogs and people have been ordering stuff and we've been sending it to them by mail. This been we've been doing this for years. We know how to do this as well as anybody, so we could compete with Amazon. But they didn't do that and they were too late getting into the game on that. Yeah, I could never understand had, that because and, they just yeah. they just kind of stood by the side and got beat up. And now look at what Phil has. Isn't that the Sears catalog? <laughs> you know, uh, that, you mean Kevin? Uh, the Kevin. Uh, I, the book oh. I read last uh, the other day for the uh, class I was in uh, in Nashville uh, was called Out of the Maze. It was uh, written by the same guy that uh, wrote uh, Who Moved My Cheese. And uh, what oh, they're yeah. talking about is you know that. Things are changing, and you just can't stay doing things the old way that you were doing it, or even selling sometimes the old product that you were selling. Oh, and yeah. yeah, well, it's like uh, uh, Sears and Kmart. They bought. They bought one of one of them. Bought the other up. Sears yeah. and Kmart, mm-hmm. and now they're slowly closing down all their stores. They just announced another eighty stores are closing up. One of them's here in town. And they're closing another 80 Kmart's and another 80 Sears stores now, and, and they're, so they're just slowly, you know, withering away. When they could have gotten back into this, mm-hmm. and you know, at least competed with somebody like Amazon. I mean, same thing with Montgomery Ward's and J.C. Penney's. Yeah. They all had catalogs too. Yeah, yeah but they were. They, they, there's no money in the like Sears was they they died they became so diverse. Remember they bought Allstate insurance. Yeah, and, yeah. And with all that, they had no money to to really aggressively go after Amazon. They're trying to just stop the bleeding. Yeah. Well, yeah. the point, the question, to they're print. hemorrhaging right now. The question is, at what point is Amazon going to have gone too far? In other That's, words, I exceeded their reach. Yeah, you know, and it's I, starting. I, I th- think they're close. I think, I they're, think close. they're close. I, you know, yeah. it's just a little too much. What do you want to do? You want to uh, go to Whole Foods? You want to? Uh, uh, what do they have? They have all kinds of things. Well, yeah, they've got know. everything. I mean, I'm buying parts for my car I'm from that freaking place. Well, yeah. you can get yeah. it almost I anything. I bought shocks from them. From them. I just yeah. bought a, 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 a shiny tailgate latch from the back of my truck up from them. And, and it's I got like a starter for my car. Yeah, you don't you <laughs> you get everything from them now. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's like they're almost they're, they're like peaked and they're plateauing and they're now they're doing their their uh their it's gonna take drone a while deliveries and everything yeah, else. Yeah, Is I, that going to kill them? The drone it's deliveries gonna, it's going to take crap. it's going to take a while for that to 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 start to go down the other way. Yeah, I even like order my plateauing. I yeah. order I order water from them and I have it delivered every week. A, a oh, case, a case of, spe- of Marjorie water. Order, Marjorie water. orders uh, uh, um, I can't remember the name of the water, but she she sends away for water. And by yeah. the way, water is a waste. You can get yeah. that yeah. out of the fucking tap. You know, yeah, I do that myself. I it's do not the same. Can. No, I'll no. tell you something. Get get a water filter. Like what were you going to say? Wait, 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 Rob was going to say something. Rob. I put- 
reverse osmosis water filter on my sink. This is the yeah. best water. This blows away any bottled water I've ever had. I, I get stuff that's alkaline. It's like 8.1 uh, pH, and it's got like a, a watermelon and uh, and strawberry flavor that has no calories, no nothing. And, and it's tasty. I actually yeah. enjoy it. it. Are you sure you're just not drinking a slot machine? From. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's called Flow. He's probably drinking Kool-Aid. Cool. Uh, the the, the Kool-Aid. It depends I, on this where is you're what, getting this is the, my uh, bubbly? the bubbly. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, that's bubbly, bubbly raspberry. Yeah, you I, know who I don't like this the, from this company. Favorite, but this you is know good. whose company that is? I think that's uh, what's his it, name? Neil Patrick Pepsi. Harris's team. Company. This is Pepsi. Do you know this what happens? Pepsi. I use. I, and next year, Coke is going to introduce theirs. Yeah, Neil Patrick Snapple. Harris started that. I use yeah. Snapple a lot, yeah, and yeah. so I buy the big case of it at Costco. Why well, is it? That in every case, they always of anything. There's always a flavor you don't like. Right. Yep. That's, that's the way they get you. Right. You know, and the one I can't stand, by the way, is the original Snapple flavor, which is lemon. Yeah. I don't mind that. I like the peach. I like See, the peach. I like I, the strawberry. Yeah. And they used like to the have. It, they used to have four different oh, yeah. types in there. They used to have a half and half in there as well. Right. So I only got so many cool. lemons, but now a third of it is a lemon because they did away with the half and half. And I, so I force myself to drink the lemon. I, I go out, on, I get this, Amazon. I get, go out and I get this case of, uh, of candy, uh, this uh, a package of this candy from, um, uh, who's the company? Um, Rocks. But, but well, it's, it's sugar free. Okay. Oh. And, and it's, uh, I'm trying to remember, Stuart, what, what's the name of it? Uh, I can't remember. See, I'm uh, fucked up. Anyway, uh, where was I? Uh, you, you were saying you ordered a case of candy and I guess some of the flavors? The, yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, 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 Stuart Little or something? I don't know. What's, what's the name of it? That's I the mouse. No, I have no idea. Uh, there we go. Okay, so anyway, where was I? Okay. Uh, so you're talking oh, about being forced oh, to get oh, yeah, flavors yeah, that yeah, you don't yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. So it has like five different flavors in it. It's got coconut. And I do not like oh, coconut. coconut. Yeah. So I like now, coconut. now when I'm through eating a whole bag, there's still a whole bunch of coconuts. They're sugar free. Send me the coconut. Oh jeez. <laughs> like coconut. Sh- ship it out to you, huh? Yeah. yeah. I'll eat the coconut. Yeah. Uh, like but it, 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 you know, uh, it, there's always some flavor you don't want. When I yeah. you is remember, there pineapple? You remember, you remember chuckles? Oh no. yeah. I hated the licorice. I hated the licorice. I liked the and licorice. And I, I would always, hold, I would always hold them in the movie theater. I would hold them up to the screen when I was a kid. I would also do that with juji fruits and uh, uh, juji fruits and see if there was a black one. If there was, it went on the floor. Okay. Uh, this sounds very bigoted to me. You don't like the black ones? I didn't like lick. I never liked licorice. I've never liked it either. I've never uh, yeah, I but, love but, it. But like it. Uh, yeah, well, licorice yeah, is good. Like, well, anyway, it's like cough syrup in it. And sometimes yes. I, would, I would hold yes. it up to the screen, and it was a dark picture on the screen at the time. And I thought I was having like a strawberry, and I would put it in my mouth and <laughs> it's a licorice, you know. Yeah, yeah. Shot. So yeah. I, and I had the same thing with chuckles. There was always one licorice in there. Couldn't they make the whole thing without a licorice? You know. No. Wow. That's for us licorice likers. Yeah. 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 So you never got the licorice uh, that were in this, you know, the stems, what do they call them? Uh, like the red or the black? Uh, oh, you buy them in a Well, package. there's no such thing as red. Have, let, me, oh. let me clear something up for you, Phil. Yeah. There is no such thing as red licorice. Right. It's red colored licorice. It's red. No. Huh? It's no. not red colored licorice. It's not red colored licorice. It's, it's red vines. The reason right. it's red not, vines, licor, that's it. licorice yeah. is, is Twizzlers. or Twizzlers, but it, licorice yeah. is a flavor. It's an anisette flavor. Anise, yeah. And so, therefore, you can't have red licorice. Right. Okay. Oh. Well, oh. Red vines, it's not red licorice? Mm-mm. No. Oh, they've been selling it licorice as... Licorice is licorice. Know. Yeah. If you look at it, it doesn't say licorice. 
You know, in California, when you're uh, riding motorcycle or bicycle or something on the side of the road, you see all the anise plants and you smell the, the licorice smell. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's, it's actually pretty nice. Well, that's uh, yeah, and the next uh, the next uh, county over is strawberries, and the next county over is uh, lemon. Only uh, in Marin. And, well, in uh, our county, it's pot It's now. like a Chuckles package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there something happening in California that I was reading, hearing about, and then I forgot about? There is uh, some... some it's, uh, fires. I don't... Yeah, well, the fires. The fires are out, aren't they, pretty much? No, I don't think no, so. They're still going. Yeah. Some of them. They're, they're, oh, they're starting... Now. They're moving back to paradise. They've already built six houses, uh, and so they were celebrating. I guess it was a year since the Twelve paradise months, fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, you know the the thing I wanted to talk about, and it's too bad that Charlie got off. Was uh, the homeless? Oh, is that, that who's being, is that uh, who's not here? Yeah, yeah Charlie yeah, left. Charlie left. Yeah. What happened to uh, Charlie? Uh, maybe he had a problem with his Skype. Yeah. The, the the homeless in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and uh, there's uh, another area. Uh, besides Texas, where uh, they're sweeping the homeless off the streets. Uh, I forget which state uh, it was, but there's a lot of protests. Oh, oh, uh, Patrick knows. Patrick. Oh, it's Wisconsin, they're, isn't it? Yeah. They're getting rid of them here. Yeah. We have what was called Tent City for two years, but now that the Democrats are coming in June for the convention, they want to get rid of the homeless, so it looked like a nice city rather than some bullshit with all the homeless uh, right around the convention area. Yeah, so, I saw that. So they're getting rid of all the homeless. They're going to make it a green space. They're going to sod it and get it all nice. And then after the Democrats leave in June, then they'll probably let them go back and, and live there. But right now they're in the process of evicting everybody. And the cold weather should be enough to get rid of them. Sure, because there were 13 degrees today, so... How know. do you evict people who are homeless? Yeah. Because you're still... You, wait a minute, wait a minute. You take minute. Their tents, drive not, in with a tractor. You're not, you're not changing their, their status. They do down here. They're not changing their status. They're still homeless. <laughs> but they're homeless yeah. somewhere else. The, the thing right. is, in, in all seriousness, oh. in Milwaukee, they gave uh, all of the people in Tent City an eviction notice. It was a uh, piece of paper giving them a deadline. I think it was 31 October that they had to be out of that. Like it, it, it just, it's beyond me because not only what you said, Alex, but they don't pay taxes on that land. So it's not really like they're living somewhere. There's, they were so also, 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 uh, also, it's like a balloon. If you push on one side, it's going to come out the other side. Right. You know, exactly. I mean, huh? Or, they go somewhere else. It, they, they were doing it in New York City for a long time. They would decide with the porno places to get them out of certain neighborhoods. And then people complain because they open up in their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you're not getting rid of it. It's just you're moving it. You're it's moving it. Like yeah. a balloon. Yeah. Yeah, so, sweep here and it goes. To, the air goes there. And well, the you know, I, 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 they always say, "What should we do about the homeless problem?" I would say, and this is just my gut level instinct, uh, and call me stupid if you will, but if, if they're homeless, uh, why don't you give them a home? Well, and that's the big thing they is they're opening home. all these. Well, no, uh, no, no but Phil, these... there's nobody in this world that doesn't want a home. Doesn't they're want some. To open, doesn't, uh, doesn't want navigation. a roof over their head, and those that don't. Have a have a medical problem, and we need to take care of that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Patrick was biting his tongue. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Patrick. But if they have a medical problem, like I've got a very well, I can't say he's a close friend anymore. I haven't seen him since 2005, but he went off to become homeless in San Diego, mm -hmm. and he's been out there since 2005 or six, and. He had a blog for a long time that he would write, and I mean, just bizarre as shit. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy that he was offered medical help. He was offered all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want it, we, we don't have it in this country anymore where you can force people into, uh, you know, mental institutions or whatever the PC name is. Mm -hmm. So... There he is out on the street, and he basically just 
doing what he's doing. And uh, you can offer him anything, and he doesn't want, he doesn't trust anybody. He doesn't, you know. Mm -hmm. So, by the, uh, by, by, by the so way, how, how do you yeah. help somebody that doesn't want to be helped? By the way, there are uh, three people watching us on Facebook. Let me just do something here. I want to wave to them. Let me turn on the camera. See, folks, this is a special feed to you guys out there who are watching us on Facebook. And to all you're, the people who aren't, that, okay? You're uh, pandering to Zuckerberg's, uh, uh -huh. uh, 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 what do you call it? Now back uh, to your regularly scheduled program. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What? what? Yeah. I'm pandering You're to pandering what? to Zuckerberg. Pandering to Zuckerberg. You, you know, it, many people believe that Zuckerberg is a right winger. I don't think so. You don't well, think so? He, what, he, what, he, what he may be a right winger, and the only reason he's skewing left is to keep himself from getting uh, assassinated. You know, I think uh, Bill uh, Gates did the same thing. You know, he uh, wasn't a real nice guy for a long time, and then all of a sudden he had so much money, he figured, hey, no, I better, he, you know, I better no, be a good guy. He, he, but you don't know the reason he became a nice guy, and it's, always, it's been attributed already why he became a nice guy. I thought he got a, um, uh, a, 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 a company that uh, would no, no. heal his reputation. No. He got a wife who had a conscience, and she turned him around and said, we really should be doing some good works. Uh, you know, that's why it's called the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Uh, yeah. she, she came up with that whole idea. And he has so gotten into it that he's turned into a pretty good guy, you know. He does a nice job of stuff, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing good stuff, yeah. but they want to take his money away mm -hmm. uh, to tax it so you can have Medicare for all. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren says take 2% of the guy's total. Do you, do you hear uh, him complaining? Who? Yeah. Matter of fact, Bill, uh, Bill Gates is complaining about it. Oh, he is? I didn't hear him complaining. Yeah. Uh, he, well, he all he said, said he was, was, yeah. He said uh, take 10 million, I don't mind. Take 20 billion, I can okay with that, but take 100 billion, then I'll let's talk. Well, nobody's going to well, take, right. take 100 billion. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just a matter of time. And that was kind of, I think, him joking in a way, saying, you Pretty know, much. take $100 billion and I'll start complaining. Yeah. You know? He so, actually, uh, you know, I don't remember exactly where I read it or heard it, but he he actually came out against uh, this. Oh, uh, Charlie's back. Yeah, so hi, Charlie. Do you have trouble with your yeah, Skype? Yeah, uh, computer crap. Huh? My computer just decided to go away. <laughs> <laughs> they do sometimes. Charlie, yeah. had you heard anything about what's going on in Austin with the uh, homeless sweep? Uh, I guess no, the mayor wanted it and the governor doesn't. It's pretty bad here in Austin. Yeah. Yeah, so I haven't heard anything. There's a big discussion from back and forth at the city council and all that yeah. about it. And I just haven't been following it. Well, let me ask you all a quick question here since we're getting towards the end of the show and it's not enough time for Phil to get too apoplectic. Uh, 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 what do you think about this whole notion of Bloomberg entering the race? Uh, I'm Bullshit. not. Yeah. Or as, or as uh, Donald puts him, Little Mike. Little, little He's already, Mike. Got, a He's already got a name for him. for him. Little Mike. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Little Mike, by the way, has made jokes about his height already. You know, I think at one point... Somebody said, are you going to run for president? He said, who's going to vote for a short Jew? You know, so, I mean, it's not like a joke that, that uh, he doesn't pull on himself. But what do you think? Do you think this is going to become a spoiler in the whole thing? Do you think he's strong enough? Yes, Patrick. I said some time ago, and, and I think everybody told me I was full of shit, but I said, you know, as some of the Democrats are going to drop out, Mm -hmm. Others are going to get in. And what just happened? Who just dropped out? Uh, who was it? Um, uh, O'Rourke. Who checked? Yeah. Oh, so, and now we got another one. So it, it, it the, the numbers are not dropping. So, I, I mean, it, to me, it's like filling in line in the military that, you know, somebody gets killed, they're just going to keep coming out of the woodwork. And I don't know that that's good for you guys. What? I don't really have an opinion on what he will do or not do, but I don't know that keeping your field that big 
still at this point, yeah. less than a year now away, is a positive thing. Right. I agree. Right. right. I'm not. I don't. Uh, it's. You know, the Democratic Party has a tough enough time getting their shit together. And then uh, another thing to further divide it, and it's like, shit, this is how Trump's going to win in 2020. You know? Phil? Uh, I think that uh, Bloomberg is actually too far to the right uh, for the uh, current Democratic Party. That's and, uh, you know, they, uh, Kobusher and a number of the other ones that Klobuchar. were more centrist, yeah. uh, as well as Biden, uh, I think that the Democratic Party has been influenced by the, uh, the far left. And I don't think that they'll go for a guy like Bloomberg. Uh, even even though I you know, and, and also uh, Bloomberg has has a tough time with the uh, sugar thing and the drinks and 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 uh, I don't I don't think that I don't think that's enough to I, that's not yet. enough to ditch him. He He's was gonna get single vote. You know, I mean, I, I thought a lot of that was ridiculous here in New York, but it didn't make me turn against him for that. You know, uh, uh, and I quite frankly, I do agree uh, if you want to do away with sugary products, I think that they are very dangerous to the American public, and I see no reason for them to exist. Uh, so I was not that much against him on that situation, but that's a benign kind of, you know, it's nothing that's going to make sense. Oh, I'm not going to vote for him. He's anti-sugar. You know, come on. You know. Um, um, uh, how about you, Charlie? Let's ask Charlie, because Charlie's our, I like Elizabeth Warren. I like Bernie Sanders guy. What do you think about uh, Bloomberg? I think Bloomberg. All we need is another rich billionaire yeah. trying to run for president. It's not going to work in in, the, in this Democratic Party. No, you don't think so. You need somebody that's in touch with the people. He was the mayor in New York for twelve years. Now, doesn't that count Big for something? Fucking deal. Well, yeah, he did. Uh, he did. He did three terms. Uh, Charlie, don't take well, it personally, what? but I think you're confusing his wealth with what he accomplished too. He was the mayor of New York, and he ran it well. Yeah. But he he had to stop and frisk shit. What are you talking about? He 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 was not a, a progressive at all. No, I don't think I don't. I I agree all. with you. I don't. You can't agree with everything the guy. I don't think done. he's a progressive. I mean, he did do other good things. I think the only I mean, question that needs to be asked here by everybody but Phil and Tony, because they are on the other side, uh, is 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 Bloomberg able to beat Trump? Is he, the, is he the Trump killer? Or is somebody else in the party a Trump killer? You know? Or is Trump, Trump is the biggest Trump killer, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, yeah, that's yeah. obvious. Yeah. He does Put it this way. Would you rather have Bloomberg in office or Trump? Well, I mean, obviously, oh, my yeah. answer would be Bloomberg. A, a piece of wood or, yeah. you know, yeah. a so race. Then, I don't know. know. Anyone else? else? 2020. Else. Exactly. 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 Right. Any he other has human beings in his closet? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, you know, it, it. I. I'll tell you. I, did you watch? Anybody watched Donald Jr. on The View? Oh, I heard. Oh, I heard was, about was that. that pathetic? Yeah. No, Phil. Yeah. He wouldn't. He was he's like you. He wouldn't stupid. shut up. They look. Fun. You know. He was just going crazy. Oh, here comes Bree mm -hmm. at the last Keep minute talking. on the show. Let's see here. I, do I have room for him? I guess I can go over to... Oh, wait a minute. What happened? No, wait a minute. Bree, Bree. I, I, got, I, can't, I can't do it, Bree. I can't do it. I, oh, what happened to the rest of my panel? Uh, where, where do we go here? We go back to our uh, panel. Are we on? Uh, okay. No, we're on. There we there go. Alex uh, no, for some reason, Bree called on another line, and I clicked on him, and it went over to all those other people. And mm -hmm. Can't do it, Bree. You got to call uh, using the what? The old thing that we had? The fresh line. The yeah. fresh line. The old, you know, call me fresh. Don't call me for dinner. Uh, anyway, uh, and plus we only got about five minutes left here, Bree. Uh, uh, the Bloomberg is is too old, also, isn't he? Like seventy, seventy seven. But he's sharp guy, though. Still, he's still well spoken. How old is he? I'd is like he seventy seven? Debate Trump. 
Yeah. I would, because it would be embarrassing. Well, I, here's the thing. Oh, what I was going to say about Trump debating uh, anybody is embarrassing. But he would make him look stupid, though. That's Phil, what I want. Phil, see. what I was going to say about uh, about um, uh, Don Jr. I felt on that show he couldn't keep his fucking mouth shut, and he never answered a question that was asked him. That. He would always answer his question with another an answer. Or a, a charge against the people who were there. He never would directly answer a question. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to try Bree one more time, and if it doesn't work, okay, that's it. Okay, there we go. We got him now. Uh, bu 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 you got a full house. Let me see here. Where where is? Yeah, my, I don't know uh, why my Bluetooth isn't working. So I switched to my backup headsets. I'm a big fan of Bloomberg. I, the reason why is I see him as a sort of a centrist. He's a moderate centrist, and he is methodical. I mm -hmm. think he's not going to go in unless he's sure that he can get it. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Let me see here. Where's Bree? I can't find him. I'm trying but to find you him. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah. I can yeah. hear you. I just oh, don't okay. see you on my list here. Let me try my. Glasses. You have a different phone, bro. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm right. on my Samsung Galaxy Note Four. Okay, uh, turn turn it uh, to uh, turn it. Uh, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, let me let me move you over there. Okay, um, and uh, let me see here. I, I guess I should get out the. Uh, uh, the thing, right? Yeah. Uh, the uh, pa the the. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold house. on a second. The full house thing. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yeah. Full house. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. There we go, folks. A full house. Let's hear it. Yeah. There now, what are you go. going to do about that with uh, Lori Laughlin probably going to jail? What do you mean? Isn't that Full House, the show she was no, on? No, no, no. Yeah, Full House. Yeah. No, Royal <laughs> Flush was the show she was on. Uh, <laughs> She's getting flushed now. Okay, so what were you saying, Bree, about uh, Bloomberg? Well, I like Bloomberg. I think he's a moderate centrist. He's a uh, pragmatic. Yeah. He, uh, he's wise with his money. He is methodical. He, you know, He's not just getting in willy-nilly, you know, uh, throwing the darts all over the board. He's going to be quite uh, specific. And you'll only see him get in if he feels he can do it. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Okay. Uh, are those um, are those Malaysian people we're seeing there? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the bottom of the Petronas Towers right now, uh, just walking around. I'm going to get my lunch here and... Uh, I'm going to visit an electronics. Uh, He's shop. in Malaysia, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. He's in Kuala is that Lumpur. Like a what? It, is, is that a mall? Do they have a tribute to Bruce Willis in that building? You know, it's, there's nowhere in the world you can go now that doesn't have like a mall. <laughs> or uh, yeah. is, is there a Baskin Robbins there or a Dunkin' yeah, Donuts or a Kentucky Fried KFC. Chicken? Oh, they got KFC. I, I love Cold Stone Creamery. I never touched Baskin Robbins. Do, do they, they have any do, do, do they, they have, have a they have, they have Don't be an elitist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. I just saw a cop at once, though. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, but I, 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 uh, I'm, what I'm just a little tired of, and Phil, I'll say this to you about your boy, is just oh, that whole family that. never answers questions anymore. They just attack, attack, attack. No, and it, they, they and everything respond. and every yeah. no everything about everything at any any speech that he's giving or whatever is about Trump. It's Trump, Trump, Trump. Me, me, me. You know. Good. Look at me. Hey, look at how I'm being assailed. Look at how I'm being attacked. Did you see what Kimberly Garfoyle said uh, uh, while she was also on the View with Don Jr. And uh, I guess he retweeted. Uh, and, uh, something that uh, outed the whistleblower uh, mm -hmm. that, that was already outed a week before on Drudge. Yeah, but, yeah. And, but who and, is the uh, whistleblower, supposedly? Mm -hmm. Who is it, supposedly? I, I didn't look. Uh, I think uh, it's Donald Jr. Was it a woman? <laughs> but it wasn't Fiona uh, Hill. Uh, she said she testified, and she said she was not the whistleblower. But, but she it should be really kept secret. They're going to out the person who... It was already supposedly uh, outed uh, <laughs> on Drudge's site, and what uh, Don Jr. did was retweeted it. And locked Drudge up. Uh, and so what happened well, wait was... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What did you say, Charlie? 
I said, then lock Drudge up. He yeah. deserves Drudge to be still in locked. Yeah, I, I, I haven't looked at the Drudge report in like a year, you know. It's just so irrelevant now. The problem with Drudge now is that every time you go to something, you click on it, then you got to sign up for something or yeah. uh, pay for some sort of content. Well, th it, th well, that's because everything he does is simply a link. That's just a page full of links, and those link people have gotten smart enough to know that if they get linked to, you should be forced to sign up for something. You could, you could end up paying $1,000 a month if you read the news a lot, you know, $1.99 for this one and two ninety nine for that one. Or you yeah, can only read it, just let Trump make it up for you. Yeah, well, that's... That well, what, uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, Dan's trying to say something. Dan? Well, it's kind of a thing. That I think they call it a soft paywall where either you can accept advertisements. Because I had a um, an ad blocker. For the longest time, I, I have a new computer now, so I don't have it on mine now. But all these pages would come up whenever I clicked on a link for something on Facebook. It would come up, you know, uh, either accept advertisements on this site or pay something. And it was like kind of holding me hostage. I couldn't even read the news. Right, right. Greedy people trying to make money heaven forbid <laughs> the internet should be free to the people but i when i we watch when i watch well, you know. when i watch that view with don jr i felt very sorry for whoopi goldberg who was trying to make everybody calm down and have a discussion and she couldn't because trump jr kept you know uh, monopolizing the conversation and butting in and was basically he was a I rude had dinner guest with donald trump jr what Really? What? I had dinner with Don, with Don Jr. Really? What for? Why? <laughs> yep, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I told you guys that. No, no. but we're running out of yeah. time, so you better tell us quick. What? Yeah, uh, I'll save it for another day. Okay. Uh, uh, when he went after Man. Whoopi Goldberg, he said it was because of her support that saying that uh, Roman Polanski was yeah, not a rapist. Yeah, that's because, an old story, you know. and that's a well, long time you know, ago. He, and secondly, secondly, I happen so to agree what? with her. You know, I happen to agree with her, and in fact, uh, the woman he supposedly quote raped, which it was it was it, it was statutory that. rape, said yeah. uh, he yeah. should be forgiven. You know. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so if you, it, you know, if she wants him forgiven, then I suppose we all should forgive him, and he should be allowed to come and back. To Joy this Behar, he accused of being in blackface. Yeah, but she uh, wasn't. Yeah, what was that about? She wasn't. Know what she was. She said it was light. It was light black. No, so. it was, it was, she wasn't being a, a black person. Anyway, uh, is she funny? Here. I don't even know what she. They're doing what? Anyway, hey, there's the theme. There's the theme. But we ended up with a with a full house, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see. Wait a minute, right over there. There we go. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks everybody for being here tonight. Uh, I'm gonna get off the air now and go lick my cancer. Uh, <laughs> Have some ice cream. Treat yourself. Yeah, I guess. You think I'm going to live? You think I'm going to get yeah, through this okay? You're right. Yeah, you're yeah, probably. Yeah. I'll pray for it. I pray hope for you. so. Oh, you're going to pray for me? Yeah. I'm going to pray that yeah. we'll, we'll beat this. You can't check out on us. Yeah. Who are we going to talk to at night? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Anyway, everyone, give a big wave goodbye, and I will wave back at you. Wait a minute. Let me go back to that again. Hold on a second. Where were we? Hold on a second. There we go. I accidentally pushed the button too early. Okay, bye, everybody. Anyway, that's our great citizen panel, and thanks to them for calling and making the evening an absolute uh, Turkish delight. Anyway, that's it for tonight. That's all she wrote. Uh, we'll be back again, uh, let's see here, on uh, Tuesday at uh, 10 o'clock, right after Damian Chaplin does the exchange. Coming up next, the intersection with Jack Bishop. Yes, he'll be here uh, uh, to entertain you uh, with discussion and thought. And uh, we'll, uh, he'll be using the same Skype lines, too. In the meantime, as always... I'll see you at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, or Eastern Time, not Daylight Time, Eastern Time on Tuesday. Same time, same station, and live in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.